is the Fourth Amendment. You see little patterns develop over time. So tonight, let's strip away the bickering uh, of the partisanship and get to the issues that we're seeing today. We happen to have an expert with us tonight. I appreciate you being here. I'm joined tonight by Paul Rosenzweig. He was a Deputy Assistant Secretary for Policy at the U.S. Department of Homeland Security under President Bush. He's now a senior fellow at the R Street Institute and a professor of law at George Washington University. You said it's okay if I call you Paul. Sure. Appreciate you being here. Thanks for having me. All right. Let's dive into tomorrow. That's when the Q&A actually begins and we hear what he thinks. At least that's the idea that we hear what Kavanaugh thinks. Seems to me abortion is going to be number one, right? I think that's probably one. Maybe the executive privilege presidential investigation issue. Depends which one the Democrats want to focus on. Actually, let me ask you about executive privilege, because I saw just before coming on the air that the New York Times is reporting that um, perhaps Mueller is going to allow President Trump to answer in writing, meaning he's not going to have to be subpoenaed uh, by Mueller, perhaps. Do you think that heads off the issue of executive privilege with Kavanaugh? Well, assuming that what's in the Times is true, and, you know, since the Mueller investigation is kind of leak-proof, I think that may very well be the Trump lawyers saying what they want to have uh -huh. be the case. But assuming it's true, uh, it certainly lessens the likelihood that a presidential co confrontation with the investigator, with the Mueller investigation, is going to happen. And anything that reduces that likelihood, it means it's less likely that we're going to face a constitutional crisis that requires Supreme Court intervention. Mm -hmm. As we see Kavanaugh sit before these senators, and they're going to put to him difficult questions, at least on the Democratic side, for sure. Um, we need to be listening for keywords, it seems, uh, because you know, they're not going to say, here's how I would rule on this case. Mm -hmm. um, they don't do that, and they're really not supposed to do that by their ethical code. When you hear them talk about abortion, we've heard him tell, it seems, Susan Collins, it's settled law. Mm -hmm. Does that mean he would keep it in place? I don't know. I don't think that's what it means. I think it means that he agrees that it's been around for a long time and has been well settled. Okay. Uh, what you want to hear him talk about is his view on stare decisis, the idea that old decisions should not be disturbed because people have come to rely on them. And so the questions are less about whether or not it is settled law, it is, but whether or not he will disturb settled law. Mm -hmm. um, I suspect he won't answer that question, okay. but that's the way you want to ask it. All right. And also, um, when, you, when you hear him talk, they're trying to figure out, all right, what is maybe not your specific opinion on this specific case? Mm -hmm. So they try to get a sense of their philosophy. Mm -hmm. uh, we heard him first speak to that just a little bit today. Listen to this. This past May, I delivered the commencement address at Catholic University Law School. I gave the graduates this advice. Cherish your friends. Look out for your friends. Lift up your friends, love your friends. Over the last eight weeks, I've been strengthened by the love of my friends, and I thank all my friends. As Justice Kennedy showed us, a judge must be independent, not swayed by public pressure. Our independent judiciary is the crown jewel of our constitutional republic. Paul, we heard him there talking about the love of friends, the love of family. Bottom line is, Democrats don't care about the love of his friends and family. They care about how will he rule. And he mentioned Anthony Kennedy, mm -hmm. who he's probably going to be replacing, who was a toss-up on so many issues. Uh, let's talk about gay rights, gay marriage. He would be a toss-up on this, perhaps. What will you listen for when they ask him about marriage equality? Well, I think the same, the same sorts of questions as before. Uh, stare decisis, settled law. Mm -hmm. I mean, if the hypothesis is that he would be willing to overturn nearly 50 years of abortion law, uh, I don't see any reason why they, we wouldn't be equally concerned or, uh, or, or looking forward to, depending upon your perspective, mm -hmm. uh, the overturning of uh, a decision on marriage equality and gay marriage that's that's less than five years old. Also in the hearing room today, uh, they announced a lot of the guests on the Democratic side. Uh, we saw the Urban League and NAACP, uh, a lot of minority groups. Uh, I'm wondering when it comes to affirmative action, Kennedy was the swing vote, and he was the teetering swing vote who could always uh, strike it down. Kavanaugh could be the, the death blow for affirmative action. Well, it certainly is the case that he will be a critical vote. We don't really have much information about how he would rule on that because we don't have anything in his uh, existing you know, 300 opinions over the last 13 or so years that really gives us a clear indication. Uh, but it is uh, a, a tenet, if you will, of kind of originalism that uh, affirmative action is 
counter to the colorblind nature of, of the Constitution, and it may very well be, I mean, that, that's the kind of buzzword you want to hear. What was the original intent? I think the really fun way to try and get at that is to ask him what he thinks of Brown versus Board of Education, mm. and would he overrule it? Be tricky. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one last thing I wanted to ask you. You recently stood and argued a case in front of Kavanaugh. Mm -hmm. um, what's your sense of how he would be on the court if he does get confirmed? Well, I, I have no doubt that Judge Kavanaugh is a conservative, uh, as am I. Uh, I think that he would be reluctant to find discretion where it would have to be inferred. But where it's clear that the law gives him discretion, he would be free to exercise it and, and happy to do so. And I have to say mm -hmm. that in my case, he exercised it on behalf of a of a criminal defendant to hear his, his plea, even though uh, you might think that given his background, Judge Kavanaugh would be unwilling to do so. So that was comforting to me in some ways. Paul Rosenzweig, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. A pivot now to some other news we're following tonight at the Y, including an update on North Korea from the Director of National Intelligence, Dan Coats. In early June, just prior to the